Call this meeting to order. Roll call. Carlson, Parker, Crucellus. Here. Pretorius. Here. Russo. Yes. The Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial body created by the City of Iowa City according to state statutes. The Board's purpose is to decide on applications for variances from the zoning ordinance, appeals of decisions of city officials, and applications for special exceptions requested under the zoning ordinance. The Board of Adjustment is an independent volunteer board made up of Iowa City residents and is not a part of city administration. We are assisted in our work by the City Attorney's Office and by planning staff. Prior to this meeting, board members received the materials submitted by the applicants, the staff reports, staff reports reviewing the application, and any correspondence submitted by members of the public. Board members have not discussed the application or its merits with each other staff, the applicant, or any other member of the public in advance of this meeting. All consideration and discussion by the board takes place in open meeting here tonight, where we also have the opportunity to hear from from the public. The board bases its decisions on facts and evidence allowed by city code presented in open meeting. Concise and truthful testimony helps us a great deal in our decision making. We ask that if you wish to speak that you come to the podium, print your name and an address on the sign-in sheet and speak clearly into the microphone so your testimony can be heard by all present and by our minute taker as all testimony becomes part of the public record. We ask that the proceedings be orderly and that when you are testifying, your, you address your remarks to the board. If this hearing becomes lengthy, we may ask that the testimony be focused on new facts or on information not already presented. The order of proceedings for each application will be an oral report by staff summarizing the issues of the case and staff's recommendations, an opportunity for the applicant to speak, an opportunity for any other interested parties to speak for or against the application, an opportunity for final statements and arguments by the applicant and staff, <clears throat> um, and the board will discuss the issues and evidence, state its findings, and vote on a motion. Motions are always made in the affirmative. So, now we will consider the minutes from last meeting. Are there any corrections anybody has? Nope. I move to approve the minutes. I second. Okay. We'd vote on that or? Yeah, just all yeah. in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now the first item of business is um, item number EXC 22-0002, an application submitted by Mike Olviera of Prestige Properties, LLC, and David Ginger requesting to convert a two-family duplex to use to a detached single-family use in a central business surface CB2 zone at 311 North Gilbert Street. And we'll have the staff report. Thank you. We need to open the public hearing. That comes later, doesn't it? No. Curse the minute of the public. Oh, okay. Open the public meeting. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, as you noted, EXC 22 0002 is uh, submitted by Prestige Properties, which includes Mike Oliveira and David Ginger. They're going to convert, requesting to convert a uh, two family or duplex use into a detached single family use. Uh, it's in a central business service zone, CD2, uh, and it's at 311 North Gilbert. So, just to give you some context to start off, uh, the the owner is, is doing this for both this property and the property directly to the north. So the, the uh, location map you can see on your screen right now shows this property, which is to the south. Uh, they do share a common driveway. Uh, it's in a CB2 zone, but there are some residential uses allowed around it as, long, as well as some commercial uses. And then to the north, uh, more residential uses, but the zoning switches, uh, which you can see in the zoning map. So to the north is residential neighborhood stabilization, RNS 12, and then this is CB2, and then across the street is office commercial to the east. 
So this property was originally built as a detached single family home more than a hundred years ago. I think the assessor site says 1900, but that's usually a stand in for it was probably built before then. Um, it was converted to a duplex around 1977 based on rental permit information. Uh, the, the duplex has a one bedroom unit on the main floor and then a two bedroom unit on the second floor. Uh, and the property has two conforming parking spaces. Uh, however, uh, it does have a rental occupancy of eight with four rental occupants uh, per unit. Uh, and this, so we have some correspondence that I'll talk about later. The occupancy was determined uh, in a study that was done around 2000 where they reviewed uh, rental properties with non-conforming parking spaces. And so they looked at residential occupancy, they looked at square footage, um, and then they determine the rental occupancy and that's been carried forward since that time. So, so their legal rental permit is that they can have up to eight occupants uh, for in each unit. Uh, the property CB2 zone uh, does not allow detached single family or duplex uses, uh, but there is uh, a provision where a non-conforming use can be granted a special exception to convert to a different non-conforming use of the same or lesser intensity prov provided all the approval criteria is met that we'll go through. Uh, typically, we see this in where there's a commercial building in a single family zone. So this is a bit of an unusual circumstance, um, but both of these uses would be non-conforming and it would be uh, less intense uses. So following the conversion, the applicant has indicated a desire to transition the second floor kitchen and living room back into bedrooms. So that would increase the number of bedrooms to five, uh, but based on the current on-site parking that there is, uh, which is two conforming spaces, uh, that would limit adult occupancy to three adult occupants based on our zoning code. That being said, uh, the, adult, the applicant is requested to use two off-site parking spaces to allow an additional two adult occupants uh, which is allowed um, per the zoning code at 145A4F1 uh, that would be approved or could be approved by the Director of Neighborhood and Development Services. Uh, at this time, staff has received a complete application, but we're still reviewing it. So uh, the review is not complete yet. Um, as far as that review, the potential for additional occupancy is a de decision that's independent of the special exception. So it does not affect staff's recommendation regarding the conversion from a duplex to a sing or detached single family use. Uh, in terms of the site plan, I'll, you can see that on your screen right now. So the property is about nine feet from the front lot line. The CB2 zoning doesn't have that many dimensional standards. So, so uh, there really are no complications there uh, with open space in the back. And then you can see that parking is in that shared driveway to the north. Uh, with one space in the driveway and one space in the garage at the back of the site. So here you can see the property um, or the two properties uh, with 311 being the one highlighted uh, in the box. And then here are two pictures of the property, one looking at it uh, directly straight on looking west and then one is looking southwest, uh, which shows a bit of that driveway. The applicant also submitted proposed floor plans. So this shows the, the five bedrooms that are proposed where there would be four on the upper story and one uh, on the main level. And as to your role tonight, uh, you're charged with approving, approving with conditions or denying the application based on the facts presented. To approve the special exception, you must find that all uh, applicable approval criteria are met, which includes specific standards for the waiver requested, and then also for general standards, which apply to all special exceptions. So as to the criteria that we're talking about, it's found at 144E5B2, which is for non-conforming uses. And it, the standard is the Board of Adjustment may grant a special exception to allow a non-conforming use, which is located in a structure not designed for a use allowed in the zone, to be converted to a non-conforming use in a different use category or subgroup that is the same or lesser in intensity than the existing use, provided the following conditions are met. So that first condition uh, is that the proposed use will be located in a structure that was designed for a use that is currently not allowed in the zone, uh, for example, a storefront commercial building located in a single family residential zone. So in this case, 311 North Gilbert was constructed as a detached single family use more than 100 years ago, was subsequently converted into a duplex. 
uh, and CB2 zones do not allow two family uses, uh, nor do they allow detached single family uses, uh, but the use is a legal non-conforming use. The second criteria is that it is the same or lesser level of intensity and impact than the existing use. Uh, and then there's some commentary with that, which is the Board of Adjustment will make a determination regarding the relative intensity of the proposed use by weighing evidence presented by the applicant with regards to such factors as anticipated traffic generation, parking demand, hours of operation, residential occupancy, noise, dust, and customer and or resident activity. And the Board of Adjustment may also consider qualitative factors such as whether a proposed use will serve an identified need within the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, so regarding the intensity, uh, generally a detached single family use, which is one dwelling unit, is considered a lesser intensity than a duplex use, which is two dwelling units. Uh, and the two dwelling units in the duplex do have a combined rental occupancy of eight with four occupants in each unit. Uh, with the conversion to single family, the structure will only be able to have three adult occupants due to the property only having two parking spaces. Uh, and that is exclusively with on-site parking. Uh, and the impact of a single family use will be of a lesser intensity than the impact of the duplex, uh, staff believes, based on the reduction in the legacy rental occupancy. Uh, and once a duplex is converted to a single family use, it may not be converted back uh, to a prior non-conforming use. And I'll also talk, like I said, I'll talk a bit more about that correspondence uh, a little later. Uh, the third specific criteria is that it's the proposed use is suitable for the subject structure and site. So it was originally constructed as detached single family and returning the duplex conversion to a detached single family is appropriate, staff believes. So staff believes that this criteria is met. And then finally, the structure will not be structurally altered or enlarged in such a way as to enlarge the non-conforming use. Ordinary, ordinary repair and maintenance, installation or relocation of walls, partitions, fixtures, wiring, and plumbing is allowed as long as the use is not enlarged. So no physical changes will be made to the exterior of the house as part of the conversion. Um, if approved, the applicant has proposed converting the second floor kitchen and living room back into bedrooms and removing the permanent separation between dwelling units. Uh, staff does recommend that converting the second floor kitchen into a bedroom and removing the permanent barrier between units uh, be conditions of approval um, only because uh, you know, th that would really complete the transition from a duplex to single family. So if it's being converted to single family, that should, that should occur all the way. Uh, increasing the number of bedrooms is an enlargement uh, under the code, which is typically not allowed for non-conforming uses, um, but that would occur uh, after the fact, uh, after it is converted and a non-conforming single family use is unusual and that it may be enlarged, provided the expansion does not increase other non-conforming situations on the property. Uh, so consequently, that occupancy could be increased if the Board of Adjustment approves the conversion, uh, but, but staff does not consider that to be, uh, the conversion itself to be an enlargement. So it's kind of an unusual circumstance with, with some unusualities with the uh, non-conforming provisions for single family uses. So that's a little confusing. Uh, and then there are seven, uh, typical, you know, uh, seven approval criteria that apply to all special exceptions. Those are at 14.4B3. Uh, the first is that the specific proposed exception will not be detrimental to or endanger the public health, safety, comfort, or general welfare. Uh, so the property is already a non-conforming use in a commercial zone, and it would be converted into another less intensive uh, commercial or non-conforming use. Uh, there are no physical changes to the exterior of the structure. Uh, and currently the two dwelling units in the duplex have a combined rental occupancy of eight with four occupants in each unit. Uh, with the conversion to single family, the structure will be restricted to three adult occupants to the property, only having two off-street parking spaces. The second criteria is that uh, the proposed exception will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity and will not substantially diminish or impair property values in the neighborhood. Uh, and staff finds that the conversion of the property from a duplex to detached single family is changing it back to its original use uh, and the area has a mix of residential and commercial uses which includes single family homes uh, so staff anticipates no impacts on the surrounding property values third criteria is that the establishment uh, of the exception uh, will not impede normal or orderly development and improvement of surrounding properties for the area 
Uh, and the surrounding area is already fully developed. It's got a mix of residential and commercial uses, including some established businesses. Uh, there are no proposed physical changes to the exterior of the structure and the property complies with setbacks uh, in the CB2 zone. Fourth, adequate utilities, access roads, drainage and or necessary facilities have been or are being provided. Uh, it's an already developed property with all utilities, access roads, drainage and necessary uh, facilities established. Uh, pedestrian access is available along North Gilbert Street to the east and vehicular access to shared parking is provided uh, in conjunction with the adjacent property to the north, which is 315 and North Gilbert Street. Uh, access will not change due to the proposed exception. Uh, and because there are no impacts to the exterior of the structure, it won't impact stormwater at all. So staff believes that this criteria is met. The fifth criteria is that adequate measures have been or uh, will be taken to provide ingress or egress designed to minimize traffic congestion on public streets. <laughs> uh, again, there are no changes to the, the proposed uh, driveway, sidewalk, or street, and the property has two, confor two conforming parking spaces, uh, but it will need to continue to share access with 315 North Gilbert Street uh, to ensure access to that parking. Uh, as for traffic, it's anticipated that it would be similar to other single family uses in Iowa City. Six, that it complies with all other standards uh, in the code. So first, the property meets all dimensional standards for the CB2 zone, uh, and then all single family site development standards, including open space requirements. Uh, as noted earlier, to ensure adequate access for the property's two parking spaces, it has to continue to share access with 315 uh, North Gilbert Street. Uh, and then finally, because the property would convert to a single family use with two parking spaces, the maximum occupancy of the property would be restricted to three adult occupants. And then the final criteria is that it must comply uh, with the comprehensive plan of the city. Uh, as far as the future land use map designations for this property, uh, the comprehensive plan shows it as mixed use and the central district plan shows it as urban commercial. So the zoning is consistent with these categories and will not change uh, as a result of the special exception. Uh, and a non-conforming use in a structure not designed for the zone may be converted to a less intense non-commercial use. Uh, in addition, the central district plan has goals uh, to maintain and improve older housing stock and encourages reinvestment in residential properties throughout the district. Uh, and so returning a duplex conversion back into a single family home better uh, reflects the original use of the property uh, until such a time as the property is redeveloped. So staff believes that this criteria is met. Based on these findings, staff recommends approval of EXC 22-0002 to convert a two-family use to a detached single-family use for 311 North Gilbert Street, subject to two conditions. Uh, and those are that the physical permanent separation between dwelling units within a du the duplex must be removed prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy. And then second, that the kitchen on the second floor must be converted to a legal bedroom prior to issuance of a rental permit. Now staff did receive several inquiries uh, and then also a late public comment. So that public comment uh, for those in the audience is available near the door. I've also provided it to you at your table and, and forwarded on to, to everyone. Um, it is from Don and Dorothy Fowles and it notes, uh, it, it's a pretty lengthy letter. I'm not gonna read it, but I just wanted to touch on a, a few kind of the highlights uh, of the letter itself. Um, so, so first, they note that the staff report notes uh, that only three adult occupants can reside there based on parking, but the applicant has requested offsite parking, uh, which could affect the findings. Uh, they also note that the single family use with five bedrooms being requested is more intense than the current uses on the property, uh, and that the owner would like to allow a larger number of non familial individuals so that the term single family is accurate, and then that the rental permit numbers are so high that they lead to false conclusions. Um, with, re with regards to the the adult occupancy and offsite parking. In, in looking at single family uses um, with the parking that is currently approved for the property, which is all that staff can make a determination on at the current time, it would be restricted to three adult occupants. They have requested addition, two additional offsite parking spaces. Um, if that's approved, they could increase that to five adult occupants. Um, even with five adult occupants, staff sees that as being a reduction uh, just based on that legacy rental occupancy where they could have eight occupants, whether or not 
you know, whether or not that's a reasonable number of occupants uh, doesn't factor into staff's determination because legally they could have eight adult, eight adult occupants. So, so staff did not see that as being, uh, staff would still see that as a reduction based on that occupancy. Um, as to whether or not the board finds that to be the same case, you know, that, that's, that's where your, uh, your ability to, to make that determination comes in. Questions for staff? Yeah, you feel free. Uh, I'm just wondering, um, what would be the parking requirement for uh, uh, an occupancy of eight people? So the parking doesn't factor in because it's a grandfathered situation. And so that's the study in the 2000 looked at all rental properties within the city that had non-conforming parking. And then that's when the determinations were made as to what those occupancies were. So the occupancy that they currently have, they can use it at its full occupancy, regardless of the parking. But because they're converting the use, they would lose that grandfathered status and then they have to comply with the zoning code. So when that study was done in the early 2000s, was that done for each individual property that fell under that? With, with non-conforming parking. With non-conforming parking. That, my understanding is that it was con for all rental properties throughout the city. Yeah, just a little by background, the council appointed a, a neighborhood task force for lack of a better term. And one of the things they wanted to do was to make sure that everybody understood what the occupancy was for every uh, rental unit. And some obviously are easy, you know, a brand new two bedroom apartment. But these older homes that had been divided up over the years and um, it was a little bit, is it five, is it four, is it six, or is it eight? So they went through every one of them and they put a number on and allow the owner to disagree. And they, so they went, I think it was maybe a two year process on the renewal of all the rental properties and assigned a number. And they did look at, say, if the last, I'm making this up, the last 20 years, eight people have been living in this house, we're going to probably have eight people living in this house, regardless of the parking. So there was some type of standards used to try to determine parking for all rental units, but in particular, those that are non-conforming with respect to, to parking. And that was just assigned at that time and has grandfathered since then. So, And, and there, there are also some grandfathered parking spaces that would not be considered conforming parking spaces under the current zoning code. So for example, you can only have two cars stacked and have that count as conforming parking. Um, for properties with long driveways, you know, you might see three cars stacked and the city would still only count that as two parking spaces. So that's also part of it. Uh, it comes, I think the other property has four parking spaces where the city would only consider it two currently under the zoning code. So the individual considerations that were made for each property are part of the city code then and are actually, I mean. That's what's enforced. That's what's enforced and that's what's allowed. Right. So during the, con when they convert, if they convert to back to single family, um, they lose that grandfather status. Correct. But then they can climb back towards eight? So to do that, mm -hmm. they have to find conforming parking spaces. And there's a provision that allows offsite parking uh, with certain standards. Uh, I can, those include, there has to be a special plan. And they did submit a plan that's in the, the packet that you have. Um, it has to be within 300 feet uh, from the entrance for residential, or I mean, this is commercial and commercial, so it's 300 feet. Um, has to be in the commercial zone for this property. Uh, it would have to be on top of whatever other parking is on there, so you can't just swap out parking and say that you have additional spaces when you don't. Uh, and then in terms of some approval criteria, the board or the director of neighborhood development services would consider the desirability of proposed off street parking and stacking spaces location, pedestrian vehicular traffic safety, any detrimental effects on adjacent property, the appearance of the streetscape as a consequence of the off street parking. Uh, and in the case of non required parking, the need for additional off street parking. 
And then it also requires a, a written agreement between the property owners uh, so that that can continue to be used as parking for whichever property has the offsite parking. <clears throat> so it, it is possible to do that. Um, most other parking reductions uh, don't apply to residential property. So I believe that's the only, and this isn't really a reduction, it's just offsite parking. Kirk. Can you confirm too that the rental occupancy would also be based on the amount of bedrooms, which is now five. So it'll, unless you somehow figure out in the future to do another remodel that has eight bedrooms and figures out that much more off-street parking, you would never get back up to that number again. Correct. It, it would never approach eight again or would likely. So if, okay, let, let's just outline this a little bit for my, for me. Um, we're, we're considering it in relation to Two parking spaces, granting the exception, allowing three people to occupy that home. At that's what we're considering. So you would be considering it based on the criteria that are before you uh, right now. That's what would be allowed if we grant the exception. Yes, but you, I, I think that you can take into account the fact that you know we, that says we can't. Okay. Yeah. So if, 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 if the, yeah. if, okay, if we grant the exception and then um, it's determined, let's say, okay, A, they get the extra parking, and then they can go to five people, correct? That's the limit? If, if they got two additional parking spaces, yeah. Okay. If they don't get the parking spaces. They'd be limited to three. They'd be limited to three. If they've been granted the exception, are they committed to converting the property? They don't have to do that. Nope. They can leave it. They can leave it as is, and then just go back to everything the way it was. Correct. So, so the exception would give them the ability to move forward with a conversion. Right. And if they chose not to, they would not have to. Okay, then. My next question would be, um, and it was outlined in the letter, if the property is, if the, if the exception is granted and they get the parking spaces and the property can go to five occupants, and what happens if the property is sold and to someone else other than Prestige, which does not have access to the additional parking? Well, it would And does it go back? Does the property go back to two only two spaces and then back to three people, or can we can we stipulate that, or what happens? So it could go either way depending on how the covenant is written. Typically, we would expect it to be just a permanent covenant, but it doesn't have to be. So it could be a, a situation where it would revert back because it no longer has offsite parking. So anytime a new rental permit is issued. You know, that would be, they would determine the parking. And if, if they no longer had two additional parking spaces, it could go back to three or that could pass on with the next owner. It depends how it's structured. What, what could pass on? The, uh, the, the offsite parking. Yeah, but if they don't own the offsite parking, Prestige o o o owns the parking. So that's why the city requires a covenant. And it would be laid out in the covenant as to exactly how that would transpire in the future. So he'd be selling the parking spots with the house. Potentially. Yeah. Oh. And, and if it wasn't was sold with the house, then they would ha have that three adult occupancy because they don't have offsite. And who property. stipulates the covenant? Uh, it will be reviewed by the city attorney and um, I staff doesn't have a preference either way. I don't think it, it would be based on how the, the applicant wishes to pursue the covenant and then staff would review it to make sure that it's as long as it is under its current rental permit, it would be legally enforceable. That's that would be staff's approach. And you had asked whether you had asked another question about occupancy, if you could stipulate whether or not that occupancy would transfer. Is that correct? Or not? I just wondered if, um, if we could I can't remember what I said. If we if it if we can stipulate that if the property is sold and they don't have access to the additional two spaces, if it 
automatic if it would then re revert to three if we can i guess influence the covenant or whatever uh the board can place any conditions that would tie into the approval criteria that you have before you but you're going to have to figure out what's the reasoning for a just say i'm making this up a three-year agreement versus a more permanent agreement what's why would you want to say that I, I didn't say a three year. I no, said, I'm just making yeah. it up oh. a shorter period of oh. time. That is when it when the adjacent property is sold. Why is that different? Why why should that be a condition? It see you see what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying I'm trying to say is it seems either you want to say you, you want to have all parking on site and you don't want to allow any off site parking. Right. As opposed to, okay, we don't care about offsite parking for the as long as this owner owns the property, but should they sell it in six months or 60 years, then we want it to go away. So what's the reasoning for that? That that's what you're gonna have to articulate. Because it would violate but, but the agreement could be reached that it's a permanent covenant. That is, I as the adjacent property owner could could cut a deal with Mr. Oliveira saying, as long as you want to use this property, it's going to be used. And when I sell the property, that covenant is going to stay with my property. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the adjacent property owner would say, hey, I don't want to tie up my property like that. I'll let you use it as long as I own it. But when I sell it, I don't want to sell it with that condition. And should that be the, the case, then it would go back to three because there'd be no offsite parking. Yeah. And it wouldn't be grandfathered in like right. it has in other situations because right. it's not because of a change of the code. Right. Usually, usually you grandfather in situations where there's a change of the code and the whatever was there currently doesn't comply with the code. So it can continue to operate as is. In this case, it would be a compliant, there would be compliant parking spaces. And if those spaces went away, then that occupancy that came with it would go away too. The way it is now, you're, the, you're saying? I'm saying with the covenants. Oh, with the covenants. Yeah. The, the way that it is now, it would stay in perpetuity unless it became conforming like it would with a single family use. Okay. But does this mean that uh, <laughs> if Mr. Oliveira wanted to do something with the property that he's using for some of the parking spaces, would this put a, a, a crimp on what he could do as far as redeveloping that other piece of property? Well, you could, as long as you still had compliant parking spaces, I believe, otherwise they would lose, that occupancy would be lost to this property. So if he continued to own, if he continued to own this property and what is it? The, property on Bloomington. East Bloomington. Yeah, 412 East Bloomington. He could redevelop 412 East Bloomington to a higher uh, density, but he would have to make sure that he maintained space for these, for those parking spaces for uh, this property here on Gilbert Street. For, for as long as that additional occupancy is there. And if that parking went away, then the occupancy would go away. And that's automatic or that's going to be stipulated in the cup in, in a covenant that would be automatic upon the time that they're doing the rental permit renewals because it would all the rental permit you know inspection process looks mm -hmm. at the number of parking spaces when it's determining occupancy and number of bedrooms <coughs> okay so it would be the, the way to think about off-site parking is you would treat it exactly like it's on-site parking but it's just not on the property it, so if you had four parking spaces on the property, you know, if those two, two spaces went away, that occupancy would go away. It's, it's similar for offsite. The only difference is that there's covenants involved and some additional standards. So Kirk, this, um, the off, the uh, offsite parking is under review, under consideration. Is that right? Correct. So what is the role of the neighborhood services director? So she'll make the determination as to, to whether to approve the parking based on, on the, those approval criteria. Uh, based on the qualifying factors where it's 300 feet, the same zones, those sorts of things, uh, those all appear to be met. 
So it would be based on the desirability, of the proposed off street parking space location, the safety, uh, detrimental effects on adjacent property, appearance of streetscape, and then a need for additional off street parking. Are they waiting to see what we will do, or is it just a question of independent timing? Uh, independent timing and what you will do since it may or may I'm not. If, I'm just wondering if we have the cart before the horse. I'm sure you guys have considered that, but. Uh, it, it's moot without the special exception. Yeah. yeah, I see, okay. Does parking in the driveway come into play at all? So there would be one space considered in the driveway and one space considered in the garage. Well, that's what they're, that's the two they're coming up with. That's, that's the two that are conforming. So the garage is only a two car garage, one, one side for each Correct. house. And then one space in front for each house. One in the driveway. Yeah. And then any other parking space or any other space on the driveway is not considered a conforming parking space. Any other questions for staff? But basically we have jurisdiction <coughs> only over uh, converting it to a one family house, uh, taking the uh, kitchen off out upstairs and removing the wall between the two units. Those are the only things that we can really uh, vote on. You, you can, you can propose any conditions that you believe are needed to, to mitigate any negative impacts that, that apply to those approval criteria. So with, with those two conditions, here, let me just get back to that quick. Oh. So with the, the two conditions, with the separation and with uh, the conversion of the second floor kitchen, those are staff's recommended conditions based on if you're gonna convert it, from duplex to single family, it makes sense that you would get rid of the vestiges of a duplex. So that's the reason that staff is, is recommending those as conditions. So it's not a half finished conversion. But but Nancy, to, to your question, and to, as Kirk was talking about, the, the standards themselves and the special exception do not address the offsite parking, okay? It, it's not, you must have offsite parking as, okay. but. The question is, can you add it as a condition? If you feel that that offsite parking can be tied to one of these standards, you can add it as a condition. In other words, you could, um, if you believe that all the parking should occur on site and not off site based on one of these standards, you could add it to as a condition. But it ha that, that condition has to be tied to one of these standards. Okay. All right. So are, um, are there a lot of similar situations with a lot of offsite parking? In town? Typically, you see more offsite parking um, in larger uses. Gen you generally don't see it with single family uses that often. Um, the 300 feet can be challenging because that basically means that the parking has to be within a block. And especially downtown, parking can be pretty tight and it's often tied up with the occupancy of the properties. So there's no additional parking to be able to provide those spaces to a, a different use. Uh, in this case, it it was a doctor's office. This, this property that they're proposing it at was a doctor's office. It's got some excess parking. And so there's the ability to do that. Um, and if it, if it wasn't used here, it could technically be used with any single family use that was within 300 feet or if it met the, those approval criteria and, and was approved by the, the director. So. so as it stands now, they can park, there is no parking restriction on the properties as right now. Could you explain? They, well, they don't have any, they don't have any parking restrictions. They don't, they can park as many cars as they want, wherever they want. They, they're not required to have any a number of spaces at the current time? They are grandfathered in. One property has two spaces and one has four. But what are they required to have? The requirement is what the rental occupancy was grandfathered in. You can't park on the grass, Gene, for example. Yeah. No, I mean, for this property, for example, they're, they're allowed eight 
occupants. What does that translate into for parking? I don't know if you can stack two and not not go over the sidewalk. I don't know if the space is. Yeah, so, so the rental permit is two parking spaces on this property with eight occupants. Oh, okay. That's what I... Yeah, and then, then the adjacent property is 10 occupants with four spaces, but two of those spaces are not conforming. But they were conforming back when that was they put were in conforming. Place. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, they're, the four spaces is what's on the rental permit. And where where are the four? Oh, I go, we'll get to that. That's another, that's the other thing. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Okay, we invite the applicant to speak. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Mike Oliveira. I own Prestige Properties here in Iowa City. Familiar face in front of the Board of Adjustments, been <laughs> here many a times. Um, but in this case, well, we're not unfamiliar with converting um, duplexes back to single family homes. Uh, we've had successfully done this before. Uh, our last conversion was at um, 527 North Van Buren, which was an older home that was a duplex and disrepair, and uh, we converted it back to a single family rental. Met all the criteria, all the green space requirements, and all the massive amount of paperwork it takes to get through that process with the city. We have just purchased uh, 311 and 315. Um, we own eight properties adjacent to this these properties. So I'm a currently a vested stakeholder in what happens in this properties. And I personally have lived two houses away and uh, we modeled the old shelter house on a conversion with a city project uh, several years ago. So my interest in these houses, um, this property was purchased um, uh, and we had the option to take a look at tearing it down right away to do redevelopment or uh, put a placeholder in place, which we currently think that we should do by converting it back to a single family home. Um, the duplex conversion that was done uh, many years ago uh, really cuts up these houses and it makes them very hard to live with in and, and it also you can rent them, you can stack them full of people, you can get the same amount of revenue out of them, uh, but they're, it's a shitty shitty way to have these old homes, in, in my opinion. Um, today, we're looking at um, converting 311 um, and 315 back to single family. These are the houses uh, we've already been in and worked uh, have them all painted, got them all fixed up. We're just waiting to decide on what's going to happen with the kitchens. Um, there, is, there are 10 foot high ceilings in these old houses. They're, they're, they're really beautiful um, as a single family. As a duplex, um, a little challenging, but we, we can manage either way with these properties. The issue that was brought up with the letter that was uh, submitted, um, I do have some issues with that. And I, I think Kirk did a good job about it. Um, you know, we're actually reducing the occupancy of these homes. Um, and the parking situation um, in that neighborhood is difficult. Um, it's difficult for a lot of reasons. It's difficult because of the university, university staff that work there that I see every morning when I get out of my home and I see them walking there every day. I say hello to them all the time. Also to the students. And when I met with John Thomas last week about the parking in the North Side neighborhood, you know, he, he, we don't have a methodology where to control the parking. So the parking's tough. We're fortunate enough to own the surrounding properties with the same commercial zone 
which will allow us an exception to convert these back to a single family and use the buildings like it's a five bedroom in 311 and a four bedroom in uh, 315 um, and meet the per parking requirements. I'm confident that we'll meet those parking requirements. For some reason, the staff comes up with a, some, some things that my legal staff cannot see. Um, then we'll just leave it as a duplex. And then we'll just, you know, we'll have a, a you know, rent them out as we, as we see fit according to the rental permit. But in this case, I, I think you guys should consider that uh, my company is putting a lot of money to try to fix these houses up. We could tear them down. We could leave them blank until we redevelop it. But I don't think that's good for the neighborhood. I think the, these are the make nice single family rentals. They're easier to manage than duplexes. And um, you get better quality tenants. So um, I hope that uh, if there's any questions you have, um, you, you will consider our request. Um, and um, some of the points I think that was brought up in the letter David had mitigated. Um, and for the board here to um, take a look if they have any other questions, they can let me know. But, but I think at the end of the day, when you walk past those buildings and you look in the window, you'll be going, yeah, that was the right decision. Because currently the current standards of taking those old houses and making them duplexes, you have to cut off the front entry. It's you got to cut up the stairways. You got to it just it really makes it, the houses not function like they're originally built. Thank you for your time. I'm any, open to any questions. Or any questions have. for the applicant? <clears throat> Mike, you mentioned you've already done a lot of work to the property, and then you're going to, of course, if if we grant you this, remove the kitchen and whatnot. Anything else as far as uh, re rehabilitation of the interior of this unit or exterior? Well, um, I don't know if you know the history of this building, but the the lady that was in this uh, that owned this, the family that owned this building for the last two years, uh, she had moved into a rest home, but she was a hoarder. Mm -hmm. So the house was full from all floors, probably one of the worst ones I've seen, um, but um, that affected both of the buildings. But there is a tenant uh, that it lives in uh, 315. He's been there a long time. And, um, uh, but we've given him all the proper notices about, our, you know, we're fixing up the building and converting it. The inside, um, you know, we've just had plans to remodel the kitchens. You know, we went through all the buildings and uh, uh, painted, patched up, fixed the bathrooms. You know, we, we do the standard drill for us um, because we own uh, Prairie Sun Building Services and my construction company, and they do all the work for prestige properties. So, um, you know, when we go through with one of these renovations, um, you know, I could put a for sale sign on that house if I wanted to and sell it for good good dollars. But our, our philosophy is if I make the rental units nice, my tenants are nice, you know, I can I can manage them a lot better. So usually we put in uh, hardwood floors, we, we sand them, we try to keep as much of the natural finishes as possible. And uh, that's the old, um, and, and that was two buildings. They were a lot of original woodwork and things like that. It's just, it was just in disappear. You know, the electricity is good. Uh, the furnaces are good. It was just a lot of stuff in the houses. So I think we took uh, almost a thousand dollars worth of dump fees. So. Thank you. Right. But you're, you're, you're not planning on any exter exterior improvements. Well, we'll get to that. You know, we will within, we're not going to change the outside, but we'll fix the siding and yeah. gutters. And, you know, you know, during the, you know, we're in Iowa. It's, it's hard for us to do anything outside right now. Um, just our focus is on the inside. So all we're all ready to go to, to, to start putting back the kitchens. I just want to know how many I got to put in and where to, where to put them. So, but you are welcome if you walking by, you want to knock on the door, my staff will 
let you in and take a look. It's pretty nice. Once the floors are done, it will look day and night. So, all right. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Uh, the public hearing is already open, so we invite anyone in favor of the application to speak. Remember, remember to write your name and tell us your name or name and address. Okay. I'm Peter Speltz. Um, we actually just moved here recently and- uh, Could you speak up just a little bit? Yeah, um, I'm Peter Speltz. Uh, we moved here recently. We live on Fairchild Street and own a rental property on Gilbert 413 North Gilbert. <clears throat> and it's a very nice single family uh, home with two parking spaces and three bedrooms. So um, I was just checking out the, um, this hearing to see how things are. And um, it's very nice. I walk by those houses every day and they're really beautiful houses. And um, I really hope Mike... Um, you know, preserves them. It's good to not tear them down. So whatever uh, we can do to help that is great, I think. And I would love to see more families move into the neighborhood. Um, it's all college kids. Like when we tried to rent our house, only college kids applied pretty much, which, you know, may be normal. I don't, we, we just moved here. Um, but so as a single family, maybe more families will want to move in. I don't know. But um, it seems like, you know, nice job presenting the staff and um, I'm, you know, in favor of it. It doesn't seem like it can hurt and the rental permit um, can handle um, the parking. So good, thank you. I have one question and I'm not sure who it would be appropriate to ask to. When, the, when this house was originally built, just a second. Is it, was this a, a question for the applicant or for or for the person in support of the application? It's either for the applicant or for Kurt. I'm sorry. Can I? I already ask? asked for questions. For the, can we go back to that? Or Michael, could you come forward, please? As long as the public hearing remains open, you can. Okay. So we're still open, are we? <laughs> We're all open. I all I want to know is do either of you know at the time that the house was built how many bedrooms did it have? Yeah, the, the, we're we're converting it back to original. So the floor plans I submitted in your plan is what originally how the house was laid out. So it would it it will be exactly like the house was built. So I believe that's accurate. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and now we invite anyone opposed to the application to speak. Nobody. And Michael, do you have any further comments to make? No. I think that. Um... Okay. So now is the time for final questions for the applicant or staff or the public. Final questions. Nancy, do you have anything? Uh -uh. If there are none, uh, I will now close the public hearing. Um, now is the time for for discussion before the motion is made. Does anybody have any comments, thoughts? So apparently, um, the the uh, writer can of you, this can letter, you use your microphone? Yes. Uh, apparently, the writer of this letter just um, really. Um, doesn't doesn't understand um, sort of the intricacies of um, 
you know, the, the, what's involved in the offsite uh, parking spaces? Is that, is that, would that be your assessment? That's my understanding of it. it. It looks like they're making some assumptions a couple different times. Yeah. And we simply have to go off the facts that are given to us. Yeah. And, and uh, their, their, their concern, and it would be my concern as well, that, that um, if ownership changes, that the, that the, um, uh, the the the, the um, offside parking stays with the property. Is that correct? Sounds like that'll be a covenant that'll be decided at some point in time by uh, whichever department that was. If it's going to run with it, or simply if it doesn't, then I think it sounds like if he was to sell the property at some point in time to somebody else and they didn't have access to that off street parking, that that it would revert. Back to three, yeah. So I, I think that's, I think that's really the crux of, I think it is of importance in my mind, and I think in your yeah. in your mind as well, that we that we have that nailed down. That if this goes, if if the exception is granted, and if the additional parking is granted, um, thus allowing them to do this conversion and go to five bedrooms and blah blah blah. If it's sold, and the parking somehow goes away, then it reverts. I don't, and I don't know how the best way to do that is, um, or if it's automatic, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused on that, but. Gene, I feel like that, I do feel like it's redundant. To me, it sounds like that the other department here, the city is gonna come up with the language that specifically says you will only, you can, yeah, we'll grant you five, an occupancy of five, with the basis of these two spots, as long as those two spots are available to this. And, and the moment they're not, I think every two years is what every they're- Every two years. Right? Oh. Yeah, the renewal okay. is. Well, as, will, as long as that's in place, then that's that fine. That's fine. Yeah, I think- so. And uh, I, do, I do agree with some things in this letter, and but I think that um, their initial <clears throat> complaint that, you know, whether or not the the occupancy in this property of eight is is realistic or we think it's too much, um, that's not relevant because it, the, the city allows eight. So the, when when they wrote this letter, <clears throat> we are only allowed to make uh, judgment on city what's in the city code. So uh, the city says eight. So we have to go by eight. And if it goes to five, then that's a reduction. So I agree with what you're saying, it's like, maybe there's never been eight people in this. No, there, building, and there, I'm, I'm guessing there hasn't been, and right. there isn't now, and there won't be. And, and similarly in the next property, same situation. Right. Um, <clears throat> they're just not set up. Eight people wouldn't be willing to live there. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, they are allowed eight. And so we have to, that's all we have to, that's all we have in front of us. And that's all we can, can consider. Um, I'm also not sure. And it doesn't really say in this letter, I'm not really sure what the motivation of the letter writers is. Why, why are they opposed? Oh, they're not here. I wish they were here because I'd like to ask them. Well, I think they're sort of suggesting that the eight is a false standard. Yeah, but what, why do they? I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's uninformed, and I wish they weren't. You're right. I wish they what's, were. Here. What's their motivation for wanting it uh, defeated? Maybe kind of like what we said, I guess. Too many people it, in the area? Yeah, we maybe we because we know or they know, like we assume is that there's never been eight people and there's only maybe only been like one person. And in this is going to be an increase. This is going to be a potential increase. Yeah, that, I think that's what but it is. But they haven't said why they think an increase is bad. I right. Don't, I mean, I, as far as I can see, I, I just read it. You're right. How is it poorly impacting the neighborhood? And yeah, how, how does it <clears throat> how does it affect their property? They don't live there. Um, they live out on Running Deer Woods Northeast, and they own the property and rent the property that uh, at 310 North Gilbert. Um, <clears throat> I'm a, you know, we can't assume anything because they're not here to to tell us. But so I guess I'm just saying that. You wish you had more information. I wish I had more information and I wish they were here so that we could tell them what we're basing our decisions on. Okay, any other discussion? 
I'd like to say the one thing, one of the things <laughs> I looked at it, when you look at the floor plan, it looks like a family house. Now, whether it will be rented to a family or, will, or will be rented to students, we have no control over that. But there is only one bathroom on each floor. There is not a bathroom for each bedroom, which really pushes it directly to students. So this gives it more, uh, more a, an ability to adapt to more situations, which I do appreciate. Sure. Yeah, the flexibility of it, I get it. It could now actually have a family. Yeah. We don't know the likelihood, but it could more so. Okay. Ready for a motion? And the motion would be. So I'll make that motion. It's this text right here, right? Regarding item EXC. Uh, Are you reading the findings of fact thing? I'm, I'm making a motion that we well, clo we'll close the public hearing, right? Uh, it's been closed. That's been closed. All right. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, <laughs> I'm in dangerous ground here. Uh, I can do it. I get, I'll motion to approve a special exception item 22-002 uh, to convert a two-family duplex to a detached single family use for the property at 311 North Gilbert Street, subject to the following conditions. One, the physical permanent separation between the dwelling units within the duplex must be removed prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. And number two, the kitchen on the second floor must be converted to a legal bedroom prior to issuance of a rental permit. And maybe just a friendly amendment to your motion that you would adopt the staff's findings of fact. Oh, yes. And an amendment, we would adopt the staff's findings of facts. I second. Okay. Roll call. Uh, Carlson. Yes. I'd like to make one comment. Uh, I, in the. Wait, fine, you, I, 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 I it's either yes it. or okay. no. I'm sorry. Yes. You can't, right? Uh, Parker, Crescillus. Yes. Pretorius. Yes. Russo. Yes. Okay. The motion is declared approved. Any, oh wait, no. We have to go through findings of fact here. Oh, you, you already did that with the amendment. Okay. Uh, the motion is declared approved. Any person desiring to appeal this decision to a court of record may do so within 30 days after this decision is filed with the city clerk's office. All right. So we're <clears throat> move on to the second item, EXC 22003, an application submitted by Michael Oliveira, Prestige Properties, and David Ginger requesting to convert a two-family duplex use to a detached single family use in this CB2 zone at 315 North Gilbert Street. Staff report or open the public hearing. Staff report. Thank you. Uh, this one will obviously sound pretty similar to the last case, so I'll try to, to highlight the differences more so than go over all the, the intricacies again. But it's just the property to the north uh, shares that access with the property to the south, uh, and it's 315 North Gilbert Street instead. Uh, we did require two special exceptions because they're independent properties uh, rather than cases where we have a single property with multiple special exceptions uh, where they can be combined. So this property is, is just to the north. It's right on the alley. Um, again, it, it's surrounded by a mix of uses, including single family homes, commercial uh, multifamily zone CB2 as well. Uh, this property is across the alley from the RNS 12 zoning designation, unlike the other property, uh, but otherwise it, it's in pretty similar circumstances. Um, so this property was similarly built more than 100 years ago. Uh, in terms of when it was converted into a duplex, it was done by at least 1977. Uh, based on the earliest rental permits I could find. So it probably was converted a little earlier than that other property. 
Uh, but this property has one bedroom on the main floor, a one bedroom unit on the main floor, and then a one bedroom unit on the second floor as well. Uh, it also has two conforming parking spaces, though the rental permit says that it has four parking spaces. So it's grandfathered with four. Um, and its rental occupancy is actually higher than the other property uh, with, with a total of 10, so five for each unit. Again, it was determined through that same process whereby uh, non-conforming parking uh, was, was allocated for rental properties. Um, again, it's zone CB2, so doesn't allow detached single family or duplexes. Uh, and the applicant would like to convert it back into single family uh, because this property actually has one fewer bedroom. So it would be converted to a four bedroom unit, um, but it would be subject to that same three bedroom or three, three uh, person adult occupancy uh, due to the two conforming parking spaces uh, on the site. Real quick, what where's, uh, where's the other two sp spots that are non-conforming parking spots? So they're not laid out on the rental permit. The best I can tell is that the driveway is approximately long enough oh. to fit three spaces in the driveway. And I think it's not on the other one because it's a narrower driveway on that property. Oh. Okay. So it... it it gets pretty tight when you're between the buildings. Um, and that's why I think one has four and one has two. But for the purpose of the exception, it goes back to It would go two. back to two. two it, two it would have conforming. two conforming, yeah. Um, and so the applicant has requested a one offsite parking space similar to the other property that would let them have four adult occupants, uh, which would equal the number of bedrooms. Uh, in, in the letter, they in the correspondence that we received, they, they noted that in their application, they actually requested two parking spaces for this site. Um, I believe that that was an error on the part of the applicant because based on every conversation I've had, uh, they want to be able to have four adult occupants. Uh, and that's what the, the number of bedrooms would restrict it to. But, but similarly, that consideration is not really being considered as we're looking at this property um, as, as, as to whether or not offsite parking would be approved, uh, but we do have that complete application. So you can see uh, with this property that the driveway that's shared is to the south. It's actually a little wider on this property than it is on the property to the south. Uh, and that's why I suspect that they have more parking spaces. Um, otherwise, it has it's right on the alley basically and has a bit of front yard and has enough backyard as well, in addition to the garage in the back of the property. So this time it's the property uh, on the right in this photo. And you can see some, some additional pictures of it uh, looking west and then looking southwest again. And they also submitted their proposed floor plan. So they would have uh, three bedrooms on the upper stories and then two bedrooms uh, on that main, or excuse me, one bedroom on the main level. Uh, and then it would also have the living room, the dining room, kitchen. So again, you're charged with approving, approving with conditions or denying the applications based on the facts presented. Uh, and you're looking at both specific and general standards. So this is the 144E5B2, where a non-conforming use not allowed in the zone is allowed to convert to a less intense non-conforming use. And for that, there are four specific criteria. First is that it's in a structure uh, designed for a use not currently in the zone. So again, this was also constructed as a single family home, was subsequently converted to a duplex. Uh, neither of those uses uh, are allowed under the current zoning. Second, that it's of a same or lesser intensity than the proposed use. Uh, again, one, one unit is less than two, two units and 10 occupants uh, between the two properties uh, would be reduced to three with two parking spaces. And even with offsite parking would uh, still be four, which is less, less than it currently has. Uh, and otherwise, uh, staff believes that that is uh, a lesser intensity than the current use based on the, the, the same items as uh, 311 North Gilbert. Next, uh, is it a suitable use for the subject structure? It was built as a single family home and was converted. So returning it, it seems appropriate. And finally, it will not be structurally altered or enlarged in any way. Again, no exterior changes to the outside of the house currently. Uh, and they would propose to convert the second floor kitchen and living room back into bedrooms, remove the permanent uh, separation between dwelling units. So again, staff does recommend those be conditions of approval. Uh, in this case, increasing a, a bedroom is still an enlargement that would be allowed after conversion uh, as a non-conforming single family use. Um, 
if it were approved. For the general criteria, 14.4b3, there are seven, uh, whether it's detrimental to health, safety, or welfare. Um, generally the same uh, comments as the last one, other than uh, it's got an occupancy of 10 in this one with five occupants in each unit. And so uh, that would be reduced uh, with the conversion. Uh, second, that it won't injure uh, property in the vicinity. Uh, and it's changing it back to its original use. It's a mix of uses, so staff anticipates no impacts. Third, that it will not uh, affect development on surrounding properties. Uh, the area is fully developed and there are no physical changes and it complies with the setbacks of the zone. So staff anticipates no issues. Fourth, that it has uh, all applicable uh, infrastructure and it's already developed. Uh, pedestrian access on the, the east. Uh, this one does have a wider driveway access uh, that is shared with the one to the south, but because it's wider, it does allow e easier access to properties at the rear. If these properties were split at any time, the property to the south would have some issues with access, but this property would not. Uh, but again, access won't change and it, it's under common ownership currently and, and no exterior uh, effects to the property. Uh, as far as the fifth criteria that uh, are tied to ingress and egress. Uh, there are no changes being proposed. Anticipated traffic is expected to be similar to other single family uses in Iowa City, and it has two conforming parking spaces. Six, that it uh, uh, meets all other standards in the code, uh, and staff believes that this criteria is met. And finally, that it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, this property is also shown as mixed use and urban commercial, like the property to the south. Uh, and the, the zoning is consistent with that, but the zoning code does allow uh, some non-conforming uses to convert uh, within that zone. And the central planning district does have goals related to maintaining and improving older housing stock and encouraging reinvestment of residential properties. Uh, so staff believes that returning the conversion uh, meets this criteria until such a time as the property is redeveloped, if it ever is. So based on these findings and the findings uh, that are detailed in the staff report, Staff recommends approval of EXC 22-0003 to convert a two-family use to a detached single-family use at 315 North Gilbert Street, subject to two conditions, uh, that the permanent barrier between the dwelling units be removed uh, prior to issuance of the certificate of occupancy, and then that that second floor kitchen uh, be converted to a legal bedroom prior to issuance of a rental permit. And the public comments, uh, again, we still have that same letter. Um, same comments. Uh, the, the, the only difference it, that applies to this property that didn't apply to the other one is was that comment about, you know, the applicant had requested two parking spaces for this property. And so staff may not understand the occupancy that, that would be allowed um, for the property. But based on the rental permitting process, they would only be allowed four because they have four bedrooms. Uh, and, and based on conversations with the applicant, staff only anticipates that they would want one offsite space to, to hit that. Um, so, so staff uh, believes that that's a, a non-issue uh, with this, with this uh, proposal. And that would conclude staff's report. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. No questions for staff. Okay. Uh, we invite the applicant to speak. Anything to say? Well, 315 is uh, If you do speak, you should speak into the mic. Thank you. Just just for the sake of our record, uh, minute taker. Yeah, no, uh, the uh, 315 is a unique building because uh, it's a little bit different than the other one, but not much. The floor plans are laid out. Um, it's a smaller footprint would it be four bedrooms rather than five um, but the um, you know, we have additional offsite parking within 300 feet and uh, so there shouldn't be a problem getting this one approved so if you have any questions let me know otherwise it's the same as the other building I just thought of something for for Kirk um, are are I know in previous exceptions, we've had stipulations of 
that they they build according to the site to the plans submitted is does that that i didn't see that here is it, does that apply or so typically staff recommends that where there are especially changes to the site you you often see that with drive throughs where you want the drive through to to look like it is when it comes to converting a, a duplex to a single family house staff did not see a reason to to require that but you could as the board i don't know why they would do this but i suppose they could you know alter it and make it only three bedrooms and then would they be only be allowed three people or still four they would be allowed three occupants so it's one per per bedroom I, on a conversion i believe so yeah okay given that there are two conforming parking spaces. Right. right. Well, that too, yes. Right, right. Okay. Any other questions for staff or for the applicant? If not, we invite anyone in favor to speak. There's nobody. Invite anybody opposed. There's nobody. Uh, any more comments from the applicant? I didn't understand your last question. I didn't understand your last question. Or what? Uh, I just wanted to know if if it's one person or if, if the occupancy is based on the number of bedrooms. In other words, to save money or whatever, could you build it with convert it to three bedrooms and still get and still have occupancy of four or whatever but no they said it's one it's one current, per, the current housing code as i understand it is, is one per one it's one for one yeah. and i'll clarify this is all rental occupancy so right. it's based on rental permits if it's owner occupied it's a different set of standards so an owner occupant could have the, the rental occupancy is based on bedrooms and parking right yeah I, i'd also like to mention that when peter came up and spoke um, he made an interesting comment um, because I live in that neighborhood um, and invested a lot of money in converting the 331 North Gilbert back to a single family, the, the challenge that I've impressed upon the city council and um, some of the north side neighborhood people that live there is if we're going to convert housing stock back to single family, the city needs to have a way to incent the homeowner to do that because it's not going to happen but naturally. So I just want to add my two cents to that because <laughs> everybody was, well, why isn't the single family people moving back in there? It's because uh, it's too expensive. Yeah. So. Okay. That's noted. Um, so final questions for anybody and everybody. Anything? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time and we'll open board discussion before a motion is made. Anybody have any comments? I just want to say that if, if the city goes through another um, process of assigning occupancy limits to non-conforming properties don't hire that same company <laughs> because they're not, they don't, I don't think that they're, I don't know how they came up with those numbers, but um, they did. A lot of grandchildren. <laughs> I, I guess so. I don't know. Other than that, it's very similar. I think it's just very similar to what we've already looked at. And as long as they, I think as long as they get, um, the additional parking, I don't see why not. I don't see whether it's a, an issue or the, the conversion is an issue. I'd like to say, and this is from 311, but it also applies to 315, that uh, the proposed exception will be consistent with the comprehensive plan of the city. I really appreciate that the central district plan was mentioned 
also to maintain and improve the older housing stock. I really appreciate that as someone who lives in the central district who worked on the central district plan. It's nice to see that brought up. Thank you. So to, just for clarification, this will be, uh, I guess I can't do that now. Never mind. Okay. So we need to close it. No other comments by board. So um, open for a motion. I move the approval of EXC22-0003 to convert a two-family duplex to a detached single family use for the property at 315 North Gilbert Street. Um, should I break up the findings of facts this time? Or do it together. <laughs> I'll, I'll separate it. <laughs> were, were you or were you uh, motioning with the conditions in the staff report? Do I motion with the? Do I do that now, or do I do that with the findings of fact? Uh, I so I'm, I'll motion with the conditions in the, in the staff report, and then I'll put I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it the way I did the first time. With number one, the physical permanent separation between dwellings unit within the duplex must be removed prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy, and number two, the kitchen on the second floor must be converted to a legal bedroom prior to issuance of a rental permit. Second, the amendment. You're not going to amend the. You're going to do it separate. Findings of fact. Yeah, she, she yeah, said she's going to do it separate. Okay. All right. There's a second. And I heard Mark second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Uh, Rousseau. Yes. Torius. Yes. Shillis. Yes. Parker Carlson. Yes. All right. So now we do the findings of fact yep. after the motion. That doesn't seem right. No, it should have been done before, but. <laughs> you want me to still do it? That doesn't seem right. And then yes. we'll vote again on it? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't seem Regarding right. Regarding item EXC22-003, um, I concur with the findings set forth in the staff report on April 13th and conclude that the general and specific standards are satisfied. Unless amended or proposed by another board member, I recommend that the board adopt the findings in the staff report for the approval of the special exception. Our second? I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to do a roll, roll call again? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a yeah. I'm doing it right because I have that power now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Russo? Yes. Pretorius? Yes. Chrysalis? Yes. Parker? Carlson? Yes. So we should change that on our cheat sheet. Yeah, these are inherited cheat sheets. Oh. All right. So the motion is declared approved. Any person desiring to appeal this decision to a court of record may do so within 30 days after this decision is filed with the city clerk's office. And with that, we move to other business. Yeah, so just two things. Uh, one is that there won't be a May meeting. We didn't get any applications. Uh, so our next meeting will be June 8th. And then second, there are fair housing training sessions that the city is doing. Uh, let me, I believe it's the, the Office of Equity and Human Rights. That training is going to be on Wednesday, April 20th from 10 to noon. Uh, if you are interested and the training will cover best practices, discriminatory advertising, national art, couple things related to fair housing. Um, so if you're interested, I can forge you it. It's on Zoom, so I can forge you the link. Just let me know. I think that's it for me. Okay, board have any other things to bring up? Move for adjournment. Move. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we're done. <laughs>